so this is a way that um, I practice where I'm, I'm covering a few things at once. And you can apply it to all different types of scales um, in, in all different keys. That's the beauty about the guitar is all this stuff is movable yeah. everywhere. But what it does is that um, it, it gets you familiar with learning chord shapes while working on certain picking techniques at the same time. So it's kind of like a dual yeah. purpose. Because one of the boring things, I think, um, and Steve Moore said this, like whenever he would work, have to work on a technique, he would make up a piece of music to work on the technique, you know, yeah. kind of like the way that etudes would work. Yeah. Um, and it makes it so much more interesting. So it's like, not only are you, you're learning like a specific scale shape or whatever, but you're actually playing some music and you're developing a technique at the same right. time. So that's what's cool about this. So this could be through any scale shape, but we'll st stay in E minor. I'm gonna start on B, okay? So this is gonna be um, uh, the seventh position shape of E minor, which technically, if you start on B, it's like a B Phrygian type of sound. If, if B minor was in the bass, but we're just gonna think of it as E minor. And you could do this in any shape, but this is the one I'm just picking for this example. So the concept is, is this. First of all, when I pick up the guitar, I go through and play the scale. And, uh, and usually what I'll do is I'll play them in all the positions. So what I'm, what I'm showing you here now, I would apply to all the positions, but I'll just show it to you in one. All right, so literally with a metronome, you know, just probably a 16th note. And I'm using alternate picking through all this. There's no sweep picking. There's no hammer-ons and pull-offs. You're just like practicing the synchronization between your two hands. So once you kind of master that shape there, this is the concept um, as, as to how to practice through that. The concept is that you want to work on playing lines that have one note on a string, which is really challenging to do, um, two notes on a string, three notes on a string, or four notes on a string. So it's a very sort of, it's a simple concept and it kind of goes in order. It's like right. really, <laughs> you know, kind of dummy-ish, but for the most part, those are the types of things you're going to encounter. Right. Not, it's not the only things you're going to encounter, but it's, for the most part, those are the shapes you'll encounter. So the, so the single, the one note per string way of playing that um, is where you, again, you got to stick to that shape that I just played. And you identify these little triads that are within that. So in order to do these, um, I'm going to be starting with, a, with my pinky pretty much on all these. Or the higher note. Like if you notice the scale, it goes up, you know, three notes on a string. So we're, we're always going to start with the, the highest note on the string. All right, so the first triad is D in there, then G. And C. These are all major. And then F sharp diminished. Now, in the very simplest form, and I don't really practice it this way, but just to show you the outline, is you can literally just play those. All right, so you're sticking in this that position. So that's one way of doing it, but what I do is I change it up a tiny bit to make it a little bit, I don't know, more interesting. So you start with that triad, and then you actually add the seventh on top. And then you come down two notes. So it has a triplet vibe. One, two, three, one, one and a two, and a one, and a two, like. And again, you're playing down, up, down, up, down, up, right. Then you apply the same thing to the next triad. 
So that's going to be, the first one was a C7, then a G um, major 7, and then a C, did I say C7? The first one's a D7, not C7. Oh, yeah, yeah, D7. And then C. If you don't mind starting, I say, so the first one's a D7. Yeah, so the first one is a D7. Second one would be a G major seven. Third one, C major seven. And the fourth one is an F sharp minor seven flat five. So they're in the key of E minor, all these chords. But you get this sort of triplet sound. When you play it that way. So you, you're working on, you know, the first example where I just went. It's okay, but I don't know, for some reason it's not, this is a little bit more musical and it involves a little bit more technique. So um, that's it ascending. And then what I do is just do a reverse kind of version, or version where I go. Think of it two ways. You can think of it all as triplets, one and a two and a three and a four, and a, or you can think of it as sixteenth notes, one e and a two e and a three. Okay. You know, so you're playing. Which is kind of cool to practice that Very way cool. too. Yeah, you can apply it. The, the different positions, you know. Again, they're little seventh chord shapes. Right, right. Uh, all right, so what you do, you just have to kind of conform your hand to the scale, I guess. So the first one is going to be two notes on a string. It's going to be C major seven. And all these shapes start on the seventh, and then the root's the second note. All right, next one. It's going to be F sharp minor 7, flat 5, B minor 7, E minor 7, then A minor 7. So we have some melody to it, right? And so it's like... that are going by. And the cool thing is like, it comes from it's coming from that scale shape, but just by kind of leaving out a couple of notes, right? you have this something that's, that's a good thing to practice, but it's also kind of melodic sounding. Oh, right? Yeah. yeah. And you want to reverse it. Since there's two notes on a string, it's very easy for it to be an even grouping, like 16th notes. So, one, two, three. But you can also apply the triplet version. You know, where it's da 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 da. So that's a good thing mentally to practice it that Absolutely. way as well. And understand yeah. standing rhythm and threes on fours and fours on threes. And, right. Yeah. Very cool. So that's the second way to do it. The next way is um, a good way to kind of practice sequencing going through a scale. So this is where you play three notes on a string. So we started with one, we did two, now it's three notes on a string. It's probably the more, more typical way that guitar players play through scales. Right. But we're going to sequence it in groups of 
six. So basically, you play the first uh, six notes of the scale. So, and then you start on the next string, which is the A string, and you play the next six notes. And then on the D string, and just go all the way up. So. All right, so this definitely definitely has like a triplet or a sixteenth note triplet. One, two, three. All right. Now you can of course do those as sixteenths if you want as well. Reverse it. And then one of two ways to get back, you can just reverse the entire thing. So start on the higher note. Which is probably the most logical thing to do. Right. Or you can play the same in the same direction but descending. In other words, words playing um, three notes going up on one string and three notes going up on the next lower string. So it's kind of like you're descending the scale, but the notes are in an upward motion. So that whole thing. With And the fourth one is um, it requires playing some notes that are outside of the scale, just little passing tones. But the idea is that, you know, all these things have, are beneficial. Like the first one, because there's mostly one note on a string, you have to practice this idea of down on one, up on the next, down on one. That's, that's the hardest, right? The second one focuses more of an even picking thing where there's two notes on one, two notes on the next, so that your pick is constantly ending up in the same exactly. spot. The third one goes back to the first concept where there's an uneven amount of notes on a string, so you have to practice this playing down, up, down, then up, down, up on the next. Right. So again, something that might trip people up. The fourth one goes back to the even grouping, all right? But there's more notes on a string, so in some ways it's easier than playing when there's two notes on a string. Because two notes on a string, you really gotta quickly switch your fingers. Four notes on a string, you have a little bit more time that you can spend on each string yeah, right. before you have to move. So it's a little easier. But the idea is that, again, you stick to the shape that we were doing, and you just add one chromatic passing note in. Now, in the cases where your fingers are only spread between four frets, it's really an easy choice because it's just the missing notes. It just sounds like a passing tone. All right, so those first three strings are fine. And the cool thing about this is because you're starting on a scale tone and ending on a scale tone, you never really lose the key feeling, you know. All right, it still sounds like you're in this key that we're in. The tricky part is when once you get up to where there's a stretch, well, which chromatic note do you add in? That one, or, I mean, or... So as my general rule, what I do is um, I add the, the higher chromatic note. I right. just think for some reason it sounds better. All right, so in this case where we had D, E, and F sharp, I'm just gonna add an F natural. I think it probably sounds better to me because it's a half step before a chord tone here that we're ending on. Right. So it just almost just sounds like an approach note. You know? And you end up with the same symmetry on the top three. Yeah. Yeah, so. All right, and then you can either do that reverse version where you're playing the notes going up, but you're descending. Or you can reverse the whole pattern. One of the things I like to do is add this little twist of playing in 5-4. So I play like a, a pattern that's, that's um, six notes. Like, and then a pattern of four notes. So it's like... Yeah. 
So you're going to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The cool thing about that is that it still means it maintains that your pick is going to be the same as it goes to the next string. It's yeah. still going to be a down, but it's, I don't know. And an ascending would be the opposite. Before you get to playing the entire sequence, you can't just work on it between two strings. Yeah. So taking that and just kind of repeat that as a sequence. You know, or even just working it on one string too. Yeah. 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 Good too.